stayed in Wales and it was still just the four of us for so long, for five years. And, and here we are now in New Zealand. It's very strange, but it's wonderful. It's, especially it's, it's getting a whole new sort of legion of fans in America because they've just put it on Netflix. So I, I mean, you just can't go anywhere. It's Merlin all the time. I was gonna, you kind of already answered it as well, but I was going to ask if you still keep in touch with any of the cast as well. Yes, I do. Colin is like my little brother. I love that little boy. Although he's not little anymore. He's like a grown up. It's yeah. Yep. He gets, bloody gets used to it. He's doing a play now if anybody's in London and wants to go see him on stage. Just saying. No. <laughs> I know. Hi, Katie. Uh, welcome to New Zealand. Thank you very much. Uh, um, for my question, I need to preface with a quick uh, explanation. Okay. Um, I read an idea online uh, that. Lena actually knows Kara is Supergirl, but okay. the reason she doesn't say anything about it is because the only other Kryptonian she's really interacted with is Rain, and right. she thinks that uh, all Kryptonians kind of black out and become their alter ego. Okay. So what, what are your thoughts on this theory? The theory that I know that Kara really is Supergirl? Yeah. yeah. No. Sorry guys, I'm not with you on this one. I believe 100% that even though Lena has two doctorates, <laughs> two, because I did check this, she does not know that Kara is Supergirl. Because it ruins it. You know, you have to have that one person that Kara can only be Kara with. She doesn't have to be the hero. She can be flawed. That's the whole point of the show, because otherwise, she never needs to be Kara, she will only ever be Supergirl. If everybody knows who she is, there's no point in having, you know, the alter ego. And you want to see her not just as the hero, but as the flawed human being, because everybody, even heroes, have down days. And even heroes need friends, and even heroes need to be vulnerable. And that's what Lena gets to be for Supergirl. And plus, guys, you know, she flies. It's a TV show. Somebody has to, you know, it should, yeah. it's the whole premise. I mean, everybody... There are people that believe Clark Kent and Superman are two different people. Yeah. It in no way makes her stupid. <laughs> None of you believe that. Oh, kia ora. Uh, so just like with that whole question. Yeah. Um, so I had like a similar question with like the episode where she's talking to Alex about um, it was Sam's secret to keep. So yes. would it be like Lena's waiting for Kara to tell her? Like, Could be. Could be. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. There are scenes like that and that was one of them where as an actor you, you play it with enough grey area that later on the writers can read into it. You want to give options and you want to give options for your character. You don't want to close a, a complete, you don't want to close it off. And I think it's, it's nice. I played it as a tongue in cheek to give the option because I thought it would be nice for everyone to have that. <laughs> See, there you, yeah. you know, like you said, you don't want to, don't want to close off all avenues. Um, my mom, she's like, oh, that's okay, my mom's here too. I'd point her out, but she'd kill me. <laughs> she's like the biggest fan of Supergirl and Merlin and stuff. Oh, well, thank you and very much. I was wondering how, um, what you thought of her taking me out of school very early, like an hour after I'd been there, to celebrate you coming to... <laughs> <laughs> You obviously love your mother very much, so that's... Um, there's the part of me that goes, stay in school. And there's the other part of me going, damn right. <laughs> yeah. I think that's lovely, and I think what's really nice is that... This is what's great about shows like Supergirl or Merlin or anything. It, it's something you can watch together as a family and enjoy as a family or enjoy with your friends. It works on so many more levels than just what you see on TV. And, and that's what's great, so great about these shows that have such amazing fandoms is that 
the show doesn't end when the credits roll. There's so much more that you could do with it, and, and that's what something like today shows. So my answer is that something you get to do as a family, it's brilliant. Plus, you don't have to sit in math class. <laughs> By the way, you will use fractions, no matter what they tell you, because when I'm doing my taxes, dear God, I wish I listened. <laughs> Percentages too, just saying. Yeah. You're welcome. If only there was a program that you could do your taxes on. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, Hello. Oh, I'm so flaked, I'm super nervous. It's okay, I'm liking on all of these questions too. <laughs> um, a massive, massive fan of Lena Luthor Thank and you. a massive fan of just the DC universe as a whole. Um, you and, well, Lena and Kara have such great chemistry. I was just wondering if you <laughs> went in that with the intention of having, like, such beautiful chemistry as, oh, sorry, it's different as I should you guys, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, a few people do, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, 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 i am not 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 i am
Whose car? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, I'm not, I refuse. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm uh, sorry, Miss Luther, you were. Uh, no, is my car here? Your my car, car is here. here. Great. Right. Okay. All right. I've got to go save the world again. Okay. Thank you. You know that's all I've been doing the last. <laughs> yes. Thank you for saving the world. Thank, thank you so much. Please don't forget to validate your party. Uh, <laughs> that was so badly dodged, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I felt. I felt like that was an scene. epic that, question. That though. was my fault. I'm so sorry. No. Um, yes, it was. Fault. You worked with so much better people, and I, I, I'm so I'm inadequate. No, that was a brutal question. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, speaking of criminals, stand up. Uh, <laughs> you, just, you just dressed like one. What do I ask? Uh, favorite. Hold the mic uh, closer to your mouth. Question about Marilyn. How was it easy? Did you find it easy to learn how to ride a horse? I'm sorry, sweetie. Did I find it easy? To ride a horse. <laughs> to learn how to ride a horse. Can't you hear that? Bring the mic closer. <laughs> no. <laughs> she walked all that way. No, no, okay, listen. There's one thing about being an actor is I now make it look like I can ride a horse. I cannot ride a horse. But damn, I look good not doing it. <laughs> yeah, you do. That's an pretty much. Like, the thing about being an actor is you get. Favorite. You get like the most. Like a. You get to be taught really, really well how to be seemingly good at a multitude of different things. Like, I look like I can sword fight. I can't. But some of the best people in the world tried to teach me. Same with horse riding. I look like I can do it, telling me I can't, but like amazing people. So you get this amazing life and this amazing multitude of sort of skills and that you wouldn't get if you were doing any of the job. So the best people come in to teach you how to look like you should know what you're doing. I mean, I look like I'm competent, but I'm not. <laughs> no, you don't look like that. <laughs> wow. I was going to ask if there's any of Lena in you, but I think you just answered that. Why is, <laughs> is there any of Katie in me, I think is the question. Hello. Hi. Um, so Lena is just a soft and gentle and kind soul. Yes, she is. Yeah. She's kind of amazing. to do start to finish and I would be worried that we would do a disservice to anybody because everybody's so invested in their own version of what happens after and I don't want to ruin that for everyone so I think it's quite nice that we've got to tell the story completely and then everybody else can imagine what they want after that and I'd be worried that we would ruin that for people so I kind of want to does that make sense you know I kind of kind of want it to be whatever everybody wants it to be 
Mm. Which is happy now. Yeah, no, no, go for it again, baby. Come on, fan. No, wait. Wait, no, wait. Okay. And it will come back. I, I just must. <laughs> is it someone else that wants us? Hello, Wonder Woman. Yeah. So, we'll come back. Please stand. Oh. Name, rank, serial number. Sorry, um, Wonder Woman or Elise, whatever you feel like. Um, Hi, Elise. Big fan. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, you had so many amazing sets and, like, places that you went to with Merlin. Did you have a particular favourite? Or... Puzzlewood. I like Puzzlewood. There was... And as Puzzlewood, wasn't that where... Uh, Tolkien was inspired to write Lord of the Rings, which is a nice segue to being here. And it is quite similar. It does feel very sort of New Zealandy. It was beautiful. And what's, what was nice about Merlin is a lot of the sets and the cast and the cramps made it easy to be, to be in that world. You know, the suspension of disbelief is, is easier when you're somewhere as fantastic as Puzzlewood or those castles. What are they giving out? I see my face on that. Oh, sorry. Just saying. <laughs> Whatever. That's your friend, though. My Is friend. It? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on uh, so th that was my answer. <laughs> Thanks, Elise. <laughs> I say yes, but you might get mad again. Do it. I hope he doesn't get mad. I'm just, you've got it. He's, he's distracted. He's distracted. Um, I just wanted to know, um, because you've had roles apart from Organa and apart from in Supergirl as well. Apparently so. I don't care if you're not watching. Love the Princess for Christmas, by the way. <laughs> That's a real yeah. gem. <laughs> Wonderful. You know, you, I do that. It's do one things, of my favorites. Never do a Christmas movie that you Gala. think nobody will see, guys. Because it's on every December on a loop. I have to it's, say, though, I, so met my, I, I met my best friend on that, the girl who met Charlotte Salt. Uh, so it was still one of the best four weeks I ever had in Romania. <laughs> Place. Sorry, I digressed. Um, yes, no, that's right, so did I. Um, I just wondered if uh, any of your roles, which one um, kind of really uh, impacted you and if anything like changed you as a person as well? Uh, Dracula, playing Lucy. Because more to do with the relationships I had with the character, not with the character, with um, the other cast. We are all still so close today, like Jess and Ollie and Smurfs and... Nonzo and Johnny and everybody. It was a, it was a difficult shoot that it was you know arduous and then it, you know the show got cancelled. But it didn't seem to matter. We were in this again weird little bubble in Budapest, living our best lives and making a show that we all loved. And I particularly adored my character. And it wasn't easy, you know, to get to to where she needed to be on screen. And I'm very proud of it. And I'm and I'm. I don't know what he's doing behind me. <laughs> What's happening? Okay, okay, we're good. I'm still not on this. I'm <laughs> again, not me though. Same. But yeah, so. You look good now. Nah, no, don't ask as many. I'm here. I've flown a long way. You might as well get your money's worth. <laughs> so, I'm not, it's just, does this, someone else got a question in the back there? Yeah. Oh, hello. Hi, where are we looking? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Sorry. it's me. Sorry. I told you I'd come back. Um, and I friend... told you I wouldn't start without you. Did you see that? We waited. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. My friend Angelina Saunderson lives in Budapest. She was in one of your episodes. Can you tell me what was your favourite thing about being in Budapest? That is the most beautiful city. I always think it's amazing about the Hungarians is that they have, as a country, been roughshod over by every empire has come in and has taken them over and has tried to subjugate them. And yet they still have such a strong sense of themselves and their own nationality. And the city is still so vibrant, even though it's been massively bombed, it's been, it's still so beautiful. And as a people, they are still so passionate about all of their culture. And it's hard not to imbue that when you're there. It's just cool. You know, and you're hanging out with your five, six best friends who's getting drunk, having a laugh. My mother's listening to this. We were very well behaved. It's a bed by nine o'clock. <laughs> Hang on. Don't they strike you down with lightning from mine? Or much just... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Right. So if you, if you come into the cocktail party tonight, she'll be gone very early, apparently. So you of course I will. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi again. Hello. Um, just a quick question. Um, for um, 
your three characters, Morgana, Lucy, and Lena. Mm -hmm. You know that game, uh, Kiss, Mary, Kill? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I know it's slightly Kiss, Mary, different. Kill, right? So yes. We've got Lucy, oh. Lena, Morgana. Yeah, that's the yeah. family friendly um, version. I think I'm going to marry Lena because I feel like she'd take care of you. She's very yeah. caring. Also, she's got it tons of money. So <laughs> you'll be fine if you're back alive again. Um, you're going to snog Lucy because, you know, she was a hottie. Very well dressed. <laughs> and they're all the same. They're all totally different. If anything we'll teach you right now is that somebody can be entirely different if they're wearing glasses or if they're not. Oh. So, come on. Get with the program. And then I feel like... Where did he go? Where did he go? You do. <laughs> uh, and then maybe kill Morgana because you know she's got way too much power and she'd probably end up being the alpha. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Rudy. Um, Hi, I'm Katie. So, leading lady, how did you end up in South Africa and how was it shooting? Are you South there? African? Yes, I am. There we go. Um, <laughs> when I finished Dracula, I was, to be honest, very burnt out. It was a, it was a very intense shoot, and an offer came to go to South Africa. Um, I loved the script. I thought it was sweet, and I thought it was funny, and I wanted a change of scenery. And I really loved Hank, and you know, I had a great time. Um, and the built on seriously, that I can't swear. And that stuff, I love that stuff. It's like dried meat. It's like jerky, but better. Mm -hmm. And just amazing. And then they do like, what's it called? Dare works? Dare works. Dare Or the sausage. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. But there's a different type. There's not just built on. There's another one. There we go, that one. Less good, but still delicious. I am a total carnivore. It's terrible. <laughs> So Kyla was asked at another convention if she could play any other DC. She told me about this. Yeah. <laughs> she said she got a reaction when she yeah. said my name. Uh, yeah. A hell of a reaction. <laughs> um, so I was going to ask you, what other DC TV show character would you play? So it's funny, I thought about this after she came back and she sort of told me this. I don't want to play anyone else other than Lena. I, I, I know that sounds like I'm a cop-out answer, but... I've like barely scratched the surface with who she is and where she's going to go. And I think they've created such a complex, strong female character that I don't, I'm not quite ready to give her up yet. So maybe, maybe you can ask me in a little, a little while, who, uh, but I feel like she's got a lot more to go. I've got, I've got more to do. She can, yeah, do her justice. That's a cop-out answer and I'm sorry, but I did think about that one because Kyler told me about it. <laughs> Hi again. So uh, you were the most um, talked about woman on Tumblr last year. Congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> I can't believe I beat Gal Gadot. Oh. Who, nobody beats Wonder Woman. <laughs> I was very impressed. Somebody told me. Um, and also congratulations on uh, season four of Legal is Recurring. So, Thank you. Very much. So there's a lot of powers and gadgets and things on the show at the moment. Is there anything in particular you think that Lena would love to have love to see happen, either to your friends and family that she could do to help you. You want to know what, what gadget I would like? Power. Would I like a power gadget? We talked about this before, is people ask me if I want a power and, you know, no, because there is no point in my life that I want to wear a super suit. Those things are really uncomfortable. And there are days where there are like three or four people all lined up and they're just lying like this going, God, get me out of these, I can't breathe. I'm sitting there and my Uggs going <laughs> So I'm good not having powers. I think I'm very lucky in that, you know, Lena's real power is her intelligence. So I think what's nice about that is she's accessible. I know and it's aspiration. It's not she's a real person, you know. I mean a real smart, amazing person, but she is. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily like powers. What gadget would I like? I'd like to go in the Lex suit. That looks like fun. Brenda told me she had a great time doing that. So, you know, maybe just some technology. Be my own little Iron Man. Iron Maiden. Margaret Thatcher. How's it? How's it going? 
Uh, so, I've just got a question. Do you have like a memorable, memorable moment like on set? Like, um, on any, on any set? Uh, maybe Supergirl. Do you have a memorable moment on Supergirl? You know, it's really weird, but one of my first scenes was uh, with Melissa and uh, Tyler. And I still remember seeing them for the first time in their suits. And no matter how many, how jaded you are and how many jobs you've done, seeing Melissa walk out dressed as Supergirl, you still become a kid. You're still like, that is so cool. And seeing Tyler dressed as Supergirl, every time you forget yourself. And I'll just be like, that's so cool. <laughs> so you never, you know, those days are still memorable. Yeah. It's still fun. <laughs> and wire work. It's always a laugh. Yeah. Climbing up the ship when the when the plane broke apart. Oh my god. What, what, what was the line I had to say? Forget about me, save the chemicals. That was fun. <laughs> but climbing that was a good laugh as the ship broke apart. <laughs> It's a really, really tough line to say, and I can't remember it now. Somebody will remember it for me, I'm sure. Hello again. Uh, you should just keep the mic. Sorry, Why are you I'm giving me the Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was worse last year. Um, <laughs> um, I guess any tips or tricks on getting to it, into a character, and what is kind of your way of getting into a character? Do you have a full method, or do you God, just kind no. of do your research first? <laughs> I am not. I'm, I'm lucky that a lot of my characters um, have, a, have very great costumes. <laughs> so costume is something that helps me a lot. So Morgana, she was, it took two hours to transform me from Katie into Morgana. And so by the time I was finished with that, I really felt like her. Lucy was the same, it was very heavy, obviously costume, hair, makeup, and Lena is, again, has a very iconic look and it's very powerful and it's very far from who I am. So I, I feel that for me helps me forget that I'm Katie and that I'm playing somebody else with Lena, it tends to be very uncomfortable shoes. <laughs> Why? Listen, if you were the head of a you know Fortune 500 company, wouldn't you just wear trackies to work? Yeah. For your pajamas, you'd be like, dude, this is my company. I'm, I'm right. gonna wear my pajamas. Mm -hmm. Why am I wearing this dress? Damn straight. Right? Yeah. I have this conversation more than once, but apparently, no, apparently nobody listens to me. Pajamas for C. Pajamas on Supergirl. On, on, on onesie. Right. I have the most amazing raccoon onesie oh, that I don't have on set wearing. Yes. 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 It had a tail and everything and little ears. It's amazing. There's got to be a picture on you from somewhere. Oh, there is not, thank God. The crew's going to go through all their pictures and be like, I'm cool. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, hello, hi. Hello. Oh, sorry. Um, what's a type of acting job that you haven't done yet mm -hmm. that you, you would really enjoy doing? I think I'd love to play like a stunt driver, oh. you know? Like a really badass for GTO, mm -hmm. like muscle car stunt driver. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I you know, like Fast and the Furious, but like, no, Charlie's Throne in the Italian oh, yeah. job. No, that yeah. kind. Yes. Right? I think that you mean a Vinny? Yeah. Fine, just ruin it for me. <laughs> well, I know, I know it's what she drove, but I was thinking more how badass she was at it. Uh, yes. Apparently, she was the best driver as well. Damn sure. Yeah, right? She's good to drink. Uh, who's the mic? Over there. Yes. Hi there. Uh, hey there. Uh, my question is, growing up, what were the movies that you used to watch that inspired you to be an actress when you were older? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking at my mother. <laughs> I, I, yeah. What did we watch? When we were growing up, my dad, bless him, I don't know if you all know what Betamax art is. Right? He was convinced it was better than VHS, which to be fair to him, it was. But that resulted in him refusing to buy a VHS. So we grew up with about five movies in the house on video. And the main ones that we had were Star Wars. So that is my entire childhood. That and Indiana Jones, Yellow Submarine, 
But my mum's going, don't look at me right now. <laughs> so, Who's your mum? I'm not going to do it. She'll kill me. <laughs> she'll disown me. <laughs> um, so it was movies like that, sort of, you know, classic, brilliant movies that you now look at you, you're like trying to find her. I'm just looking for the woman who's trying to shrink into a seat right now. <laughs> I, look I think she's sitting there like this at the moment, isn't she? <laughs> she's going to kill me. <laughs> oh, I know that look. I know that look. <laughs> She's usually directed at me. Oh, okay, alright. This is the not looking at in the audience. Um, <laughs> Great job, what the way. For me, I like movies that make you feel like you're in that world, you've escaped. Sorry. I'm not necessarily, like I love worthy movies and Oscar winners, but at the end of the day, when it's 3 o'clock on a Saturday, I want to watch movies of an Oscar. I want to watch a movie that is got explosions and fights and escapism and and I want to turn off and that, those are the movies that made me want to be an actor is you know Spielberg George Lucas old George Lucas let's, yeah let's go. no, let, I mean, gotta clarify gotta gotta go with there are you know there's a line yeah there are only three <laughs> Indiana Jones movie Jones movies like for real yep just so we can but those type of things you want to tell a story that makes people feel like they're somewhere else. That's what that's what art does. It's the same with the book. You want to be transported from sitting in your kitchen to the world that somebody creates. And those are the movies that I used to like. Are you going to stand up? Hello. Hello, love. Yeah. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I want to ask you was, um, do you see yourself in any of your characters or like find similarities? that, um, I don't know, might stick with you or might have surprised you sometimes you Do I find that I'm similar to any of my characters? Yeah. Like, well, they're brilliant. <laughs> I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's weird. I find the characters I play tend to be a lot more confident than I am. I know this seems weird, but I'm a very shy, very socially awkward, very nervous person. And I have no idea how I've managed to consistently play very confident, capable, brilliant women. Because in my real life, I am none of those things. But I am very glad that I get to pretend. Because every so often I go home and I still feel like that. And I'm very lucky that the characters that I play have allowed me to take a little bit of them home. So less, it's less that they are me than I am more that I take some of them with me. And I'm very grateful to them for that because they're much better than I am. Mum didn't disagree, so. <laughs> so just quickly, um, and then we're going to get to. I was when I was surfing the dark web, I came across a rumor As you that know. originally you'd studied to be a fashion journalist. No, I wanted to be. Wanted to be. I wanted to be a fashion journalist. Yeah. And I was, first job was. I as worked. A wardrobe. Oh, yeah. As no, a well, I, I was. I was working. I wanted to be a fashion journalist, I wanted to work for a magazine and I got a job and very quickly realized that I did not want to do that and so I quit and I was 22 and I was at home in Ireland and I'm pretty sure my mother was like I did not spend this amount of money on your education to sit around and do nothing. So she very nicely called her best friend who was a first assistant on a TV show just starting and was like can Katie have a job, she doesn't have a job. And he's like, yeah, sure, you know, she can work in costume. She likes clothes. No, I cannot sew. I cannot even thread a needle. And I am now working on the Tudors, which as we know, you kind of, if you're working in costume on the Tudors, you kind of need to know what you're doing. So I didn't last very long at that. And it, to be fair to them, a lot of people were like, you know, you should really give acting a try. A lot of the, the producers and directors on the Tudors, which was very nice of them. But now in retrospect, I figure it was just them trying to get me to stop ruining their very expensive <laughs> costumes. But yeah, that's how that started. Yeah. Uh, there. Oh, there we go. Stand up. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, nice t-shirt. Thanks. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Um, 
How do you feel about Lena and James and their relationship mm. at the moment? I, love, sorry, I mean, I sorry. love Ricard. I feel so grateful that I get to work with him because he is such a stoic presence. In all the craziness that goes on, Ricard is so chill. He's like the most mellow man and I really feel very taken care of when I'm around him. And I, and I like the power play between the two of them and I like the fact that Lena gets to be vulnerable with somebody and, and I think I think that it's important for her as a character to see that. So when they started it, I yeah, I think it's I really like it. I love the card. I know. I know, I get to see him. I thought he was gonna be here. So I was like texting him this morning. He's like, Are you here? And he's like, No kid, I'm in London. Uh, oh, I got that wrong. <laughs> you were getting a bag because you just validated him. I'm like, Oprah, yeah. you get a bag. Most of the time, people get a bag. Like, oh, <laughs> there you go. Hello, love. Hi. You're welcome. Hi. Um, I'm no, no, it's not great, is it? Um, I just wanted to ask about um, your role in Jurassic World, how you did some stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how did that like come about? Did you ask to do it? Yeah, um, that role was originally like one line in the script. And before they were rewriting, when they were rewriting it, there wasn't really anything to audition for. It was a couple of lines. And when I got down to sort of the final one or two, I did a Skype call with the director, Colin. And he's chatting away to me. He's like, listen, I'm going to make this role. I mean, it's going to be mainly just a stunt. We're making it bigger. And he's like, it's going to be a big deal, yeah, no, okay? I wanna, I People are going to really say. talk about this. I'm sitting there going, you know, Colin, I'm sure they are. Whatever. I don't care. I want to do the job. So he's like, so you, you, are you going to be comfortable doing all of this stunt? And I'm like, yeah, no way. Whatever you want. Yeah, it's a, you're going to say no. They're offering you a job in Jurassic World. You're going to be like, yeah, no worries. I'll ride a donkey. I don't care. <laughs> and he kept saying, this is going to be a really big deal. And people are going to talk about this. And I was like, oh. And boy, was I wrong. And although I had no clue what he was going to do to that character. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a long time to film that. And I did. Yeah, I did all of it. I think one shot is in me. I mean, when I say I did all of it, I'm an actor. So the stuntman did all of it as well. So we both, I mean, when I say I did it, yes. I'm not sure how much of it is me that you see and how much is my amazing stunt double. So I know the drop is me, which was 11 stories on a crane. That was fun. So yeah, they had me like in the middle of a car park in Louisiana, Hold up to the top of this crane, which was 11 stories high, and there's a camera above me. And I get to the top, and they're like, Okay, Katie, can you just flick yourself upside down? I'm like, Great. And can you do it quickly because there's a thunderstorm coming in, and you're on a giant metal pole? <laughs> <laughs> no worries. That's fine. Mum might know this now. <laughs> so, yeah, so then they drop me 11 stories with the camera above me screaming, No acting required. <laughs> It was good though, I mean it was a job like that, you were such a small part of such a massive amazing thing and you just feel lucky any day you get to be there. Plus the call sheet says Steven Spielberg on the top of it so you're like, dream come true. Hello again. Hi again. Um, you briefly, like, well you did, you worked on Slasher. I did. Um, and you briefly worked with Natasha Nikabalos and Elise Bellman <laughs> in one scene. Yes, yes, yeah, I did. Yes. I remember these girls. I was just wondering, um, what was it like working with them and like... The two of them have such great chemistry and rapport. They really do. I was like just watching the two of them chat between them. I was like, this is amazing. I could sell tickets to this, which then I subsequently discovered they pretty much do. Because I wasn't really aware of who they were until they came in and they told me. I was just sort of like, this is amazing. It was like fandoms colliding. Yeah, it was, because I'm not on social media, so I'm not, I don't, I don't really know, but I was just like, this, I could just get popcorn and hey, they were it. sweet girls, <laughs> sweet, sweet, and very good. And I, you know, subsequently discovered it was a big deal to be working with them, and I should have, you know, <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> Hello, love. Oh, I can't hear you, baby, start again. Oh, 
sorry, never mind. Too close. Uh, so Lena and Lex, again, I sort of love their relationship, though not that we see much of it. But did the directors and producers give you any insight to what their childhood was like? Did they build robots and destroy Lillian's Rose Garden? What was it like? Or did you bring your own ideas? That's why my mother hates me. Oh, it's all so clear now. <laughs> To the producers, yes and no. I feel like the producers know everything. I don't feel like they tell us everything. Do you know what I mean? They have a plan and they know all of our backstory, but they don't necessarily always give it to us. And sometimes I think they're not quite sure what direction they're going to take the character in, so they don't want to play their hand too early. So since Lex hasn't come in as a character yet, they haven't given me too much details about our relationship as a child. I know more about my relationship with my mother because um, obviously Brenda is such a huge part of the show and also I love her. And I listen. love your scenes, you're fabulous. Oh, her so much. She's so good. Bre I can't ignore you, you're just sticking with madly. <laughs> it was madly, not wildly. Wildly is something completely different. Um, so I know... <laughs> nice. Um, so we know bits of backstory, as long as much as it is relevant to the character we're playing now. And it, it, this is what's difficult about playing somebody who's um, canon in the in the comic books, is that there's already such a wealth of information about them as a character, but it's not necessarily the information that's going to be used within our version of her. So you do your research and you find out as much as you can about her, but then sometimes they could be like, no, we're not going to use that story. This is where we're going. So. I kind of learn it from my own interest and then sort of see what comes up in the scripts. I'm like, oh, they're not doing it. Okay, cool. Does that in any way answer your question? No. <laughs> no, but that's fine. Okay, well, hold on. Try, try me again. Give me with the question again. Because I really sucked on both your questions here sitting next to each other, so I want to get it right once. Uh, All right, well, the next question I'll get really right. <laughs> Um, so in the last episode that we saw, uh, Lena said some pretty harsh things to Clara regarding Supergirl. Um, I'm trying to think what episode, I don't... Elevator, um... No, I know the, okay, because I am trying to see, remember which episode has been aired, and I know which episode you're seeing. Yeah. Thank you. So she was, she was saying, you know, like, um, we're not friends, basically, yeah. like, and... Yeah. Friends don't do this to me, and yeah. you would know if I was a movie. Yep, got exactly. it. Exactly, yep. So, um... Like, if Lena ever finds out that uh, Kara is Supergirl and she didn't tell her, um, she will be obviously devastated yeah. and heartbroken and feel betrayed. What, in your opinion, would it take for Lena to forgive Kara for doing something like that? I don't know if she could. Yeah. I mean, really, if you think about how she's reacted to, you know, hearing that Supergirl has done this to her, if she hears, and Supergirl was her friend, not even her best friend, so if she suddenly hears that Car has been lying to her, I mean, how do you come back from that? You know, and for all that Lena is a very strong, powerful, competent woman, she's also extremely fragile. And I think, I think it would break her. I really do. I think if she found out her best friend had been lying to her, I think it would break her. <laughs> oh, no. There's many episodes to come. I'm sure they'll think of something, but I don't know. So we've got time for, for one more question. But just there are a just, lot of people here. Oh, uh, yeah. A cosplay yes, parade right. is. They're here for someone else, don't they? No, they're not. There's <laughs> no one else after you. Not for a little while. Yeah, so we'll have time for one more question, but just before that, is Mum still glaring at me? Yep. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any pets or animals? Do I have any pets? Yes. <laughs> I have the love of my life, my reason for living, my reason for doing 17 hour days. Just me. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. I got one to smile. <laughs> now she's not. Um, I have a dog. I have a dog called Dashi who comes with me everywhere. He uh, rules my life, basically takes all my money. That's all he does. 
sits around and naps. Yeah. <laughs> I want cuddles. He's like, no. I'm too cool for this. <gasps> you see, isn't it the reason you do, you know? They're amazing. He is, he's a little whippet. He is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a complete, like, I'm useless for my dog. <laughs> Thank you. No, no. And on that happy note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. <laughs> Katie's mark, go! <laughs> For the wonderful Katie McGrath! Thank you, Thank you so much. And of course... I don't get a bag. You don't get a what? Yeah. You got a bag? No. <laughs> it's not your face. Uh, yeah, and the cosplay parade's about to get up here, so guys, can you please clear the stage? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to stay out of your way. But you know I stand up between the shows. Just, yeah. so I can just a little out. bit of a stretch, right? I'm not going to leave my seat. I'm just going yeah, to yeah. leave my seat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to lose my space. I just want to, you know, vacate like, the seat. I got a couple of good ones here. Awesome. Uh, you know, everything's all...